Good morning. Pastor Sean here. Today is Tuesday, March 21st, and this is your morning prayer. So let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, today we're in Numbers chapters 31 and 32. And um, so 31 is probably the one that uh, we'll talk about the most here, um, because it's a little bit uncomfortable, (laughs) to say the least. Uh, 31 is where um, God instructs the people of Israel to take revenge, or well, not take revenge, but take take out the, his vengeance, God's vengeance, upon the uh, the Midianites. So they are going to be God's judgment on the Midianites. If you recall, um, you know it was uh, Balaam, the prophet Balaam, who gave King Balak the advice that he should um, use the Midianite women to seduce the Israelite men into adulterous affairs um, and kind of integrate their their worship in with the people of Israel. So not only would they seduce them physically, um, but also seduce them spiritually as well. And so what they were doing was starting to um, take these women in and then blending their pagan religion in with the worship of, of Yahweh. And this caused a great plague to inflict the people, which was only um, stopped when when the one brazen uh, guy who brought a, a Midianite woman woman into his into his tent in front of everybody um, was was speared through he and the, and the woman. So um, it was a pretty big deal, obviously. And so um, in chapter thirty one, we get the um, the recounting of of God's vengeance upon them. So it, 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 we get a lot of detail about how you know they were how the army was assembled and and what transpired there and and it's a miraculous sort of victory for the Israelites not in that they were it, um, it was it's not miraculous they won but that they they didn't lose anybody not a single Israelite died in battle so um, certainly we see that God was um, was kind of guiding guiding the uh, the events there but the the uncomfortable part of this is, you know, they go through, here's the thing. So, um, you know, they go through and they, they kill all the men and and the Kings and all that. And in general, we read that and probably don't really, you know, it's like, this is war, you know, that's, this is what happens, right? We, we don't really even think about it. Um, but it's when they come back and Moses is angry at them because he sees that they have spared the women and the children. And, uh, well, Specifically, the the women, the Midianite women, and of course Moses is angry because these particularly are are the women who um, brought this idolatry into the um, into the people of Israel. So you know this is he's 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 very mad because how could you how could you spare them when they were kind of the the root of the issue here? And so um, he orders that uh, they they kill all the women who had not. Um, had been with any man, had not lain with a man, uh, along with all the boys. Uh, so all that were left of the Midianites were the um, the the women, uh, basically all the virgin women. So this completely kind of wipes out this whole um, gathering, the collection, city, whatever, this whole group of Midianites. I mean, just decimates the entire population. And it's really, it's that second part about um, Moses ordering them to kill the women and the boys. Now that's where we we struggle because <laughs> that sounds terrible and it makes us very uncomfortable and you know how how can this be? How can how can this be a thing that is a pleasing to God? Well, not, there's no B. Just how can this be something that God orders and is is pleasing to him in in whatever sense. Um so something that is is quite the struggle. But the thing you have to remember is that this is God's judgment. Um, he's bringing judgment to the to these people at that time. Now, this shouldn't really surprise us because God's judgment comes to all people. 
Okay, it might come kind of in, as a as in the middle of of your life, like it happens with these people here, or it might come at the end of your life. You know, you go through your life and you die. Okay, um, and and guess what? On on the last day, you are judged. Everybody is, um, believer and unbeliever alike, are brought up to be judged by God, um, and the unbeliever is judged according to their works that they have done, and those are always just covered in sin and then fall f far short of the glory of God. So in, in their works and their sin, they're condemned. Uh, the believer is judged according to their works, but their works are covered by the blood of Christ. So those works are considered good, holy, righteous, pure. So uh, they are brought into the resurrection and the new creation. So everybody faces God's judgment. Um, so, you know, it, it should not, that, that side of it is, we shouldn't be shocked or appalled or whatever by the fact that men, women, children all face God's judgment because we all do. We all will. Okay. We are all sinners. That's another thing is that, you know, we look at this and we, we tend to see the, especially the children as, as innocents here. You know, what did they do? They're innocent. But scripture plainly tells us that none are innocent. <laughs> Nobody is. We are all sinners. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Um, there, and you know, we, we tend to think innocence because, you know, well, what have they done? What have they done bad and, and how have they transgressed? But we can't look into the heart. We don't see the, the complete fullness of sin in somebody's heart. Um, so this is why, you know, God's judgment is just, even when we don't think it is. Okay. Cause we only can judge according to our eyes. He judges according to the heart. Um, so yeah, we, we don't see the spiritual reality existing be behind this. And then the uh, the other point to make on this is to remind you that, you know, God doesn't condemn us. You know, God doesn't just um, condemn us and, and say, oh, well, I've, I choose to condemn you or whatever. We condemn ourselves. We are all condemned in our sinfulness. You know, our sin condemns us. We condemn ourselves before God. And so when we come before God condemned in our sinfulness as a non-believer and we haven't, we've rejected Christ or, or, you know, we don't believe in him. So we, you know, we, we, we stand condemned in our sins. We face God. The only way he can judge us is to say, you're guilty because that's what we are. Um, you know, it is only through Christ that we're saved. So we believe in him and we're declared righteous, declared innocent, not guilty. So uh, it's, it's difficult I, I agree. It's, it's hard to read something like that and be like, oof, oh man, what, what do we make of that? But we have to remember that, you know, they're, this is God's judgment, okay? Um, Israel is acting as his judgment upon the, the idolatry and the pagan uh, worship and religion of these people. So um, that's just kind of the, the long and the short of it there. Um, moving on into chapter 32, uh, this is about Gad, uh, the people of Gad and Reuben. They want to, uh, before they cross the river Jordan into the promised land, they see the land that they've kind of come through and they're like, you know what? This, this land is great for us. It's great for our livestock. We, this is what we do. We tend livestock. This land is perfect for it. So they want to stay there. They want that to be their inheritance. And Moses kind of freaks out because he thinks, oh, you're, you're, you're just like those, Israelites before, where they, they were scared to go into the promised land, and now you're doing it too. Um, you're going to bring punishment upon all the people. But they, um, after some discussion and, and back and forth here, uh, what comes about is they say, like, look, no, we, we want this land. We will, we will fight with you. We will go with you to fight, and we will not stop. We will not return until you have claimed your inheritance. So um, they, uh, they specify that they're not... They're not refusing to go into the promised land based out of fear or anything like that. It's just this land is, is good for them. So they've asked and they um, promise to uphold their part of, of being the people of Israel, you know, being a part of them, which is to struggle with them, to fight for them and with them, um, and that they will do. And so they promise that and then it's like, oh, okay, that's, that's good. <laughs> uh, so this is all um, these two chapters and, and everything so far in the last few chapters has been um, preparing the people of Israel to enter into the promised land, to get ready for what is to come, which will be a lot of battles, a lot of fighting, um, a lot of opposition. 
Um, but this is getting them ready to, um, to take possession of it, to receive what God has promised to them. So there you go. <laughs> All right, let us pray. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right. Well, Tuesday. Have a great Tuesday. Hope you're having a, a good morning so far. Hope everything will go well for you today. And uh, we'll see you back tomorrow. So until then, peace be with you.